So let it be written. So let it be done. This is Tabletop Terrors. We play a lot of tabletop RPGs, which is basically just collaborative storytelling. So as game masters, sometimes you want to surprise the players with what you tell them. And that can be really cool and fun. But I want to tell you about a couple of car crashes that I've gotten myself into where I have not been clear about what I was revealing. And so the, the point to today's video is when you're giving information, remember that clarity is the number one goal. I once had a group of players who trusted me and they were standing in a field and I told them that a creature approached. It had four legs that ended in sharp hooves and hair running down its long neck. I described a horse to them. I was describing a horse. And they thought that it was a monster because of how I was describing it. I thought it would be fun to reveal... Well, it was unclear and it was stupid. Uh, what I should have said was, a horse and rider approaches. <laughs> And so that is my first example. When you are explaining things, it is totally okay to tell them what they're looking at in almost every case. You look upon a horrific werewolf. Headline. <laughs> then go through the weird description of why this werewolf is different and how they're twisted in their claws. But if you go through that weird description first and then you tell them it's a werewolf, if they're and they are, I promise you, if they're thinking of other things, it then jars them and they're confused. So that is what we really want to avoid. So just tell the players in a lot of cases, and then you have your fun with the cool description. So that is my first tip. Clarity trumps all. Just say what it is and then have fun going back and forth once the guidelines and the boundaries are set and you'll be much happier and so will your players. And sort of to piggyback on what Tim said, almost as a way to describe why that is important. Um, but then also to, to get a little into it is the, the concept that your players only have what you give them. Um, a lot of, in a lot of ways, we compare RPGs, or at least I do, and I see people do, to narrative structures that we know like uh, television and movies. And in those, even a movie that's a sequel they do their best to make sure they give you everything you need. So if you haven't seen the first one, that you'll understand. The thing is, that's what telling the players it's a horse does in an RPG. You're putting the camera on a horse, right? The, the, if you imagine what you described to Tim would be those really close shots of parts of the horse, but you can't tell what it is. <laughs> and then it comes over a crest and there's a horse with a rider. You know what I mean? Like it's a totally different movie at this point. It is. Because you didn't give us the, yeah. So if you consider that the players only ever have what you give them, you will avoid making the mistake of some sort of reveal or some information based on something they should have gleaned, right? So that idea that if you haven't told them it's a horse, you can't expect that <laughs> they don't think it's a creature because you they don't have the horse. Yeah, so, so that idea, the players only have what you give them. So make sure you give them everything and then say, okay, now what? Now what do you want to do? Yeah, and it it can very quickly become very relevant when you get into these sorts of situations because I think something very important about how you give players information is what you tell them and how you tell it to them will directly affect how they respond to the situation and those decisions will then continue to like expand out and you know continue this cycle of explanation and events and decisions on on the players parts too. So if you describe the horse like a monster, you don't then get to be surprised when the players go, I pull an arrow and I shoot it. <laughs> like, because like, the, if you describe it as this thing that's coming towards them and, oh, what is it? Like, those feelings, I think, dip down into like other media things where like, if you describe a monster that they don't get to see yet and you only get the qualities of them that they, that they are told, you know, that you have this wild hair running down its back, you know, this look of anger in its eyes and these stamping hooves, like, 
those things in a lot of ways resemble almost things like the ways that horror movies might reveal parts of their monsters. So it's totally justified then when the players go, what is that? Kill it. <laughs> like, because like, that's the, sort of the way that you frame it accidentally when you, when you do stuff like that. So you have to keep in mind that like, how you give them information will directly affect what they do with that information. And then it just, it'll help to set up your own expectations for how players will respond to the situation then. Because you'll sort of know how you're directing them to think about it. Uh, and if you accidentally go down the wrong path with that, it can very quickly lead to very bad encounter scenarios where you send this horse and rider to deliver an important message, and then they kill the horse, and now suddenly the rider's pissed, and it's just like, wait, what's happening? And it just it totally derails the game. And then at that point, it's like, okay, well, no, I messed up my description. So, like, do you then, like, go back and, like, retcon that, like, you didn't mean to say it like that, and then they wouldn't have done it like that? Or do you just continue on? Like, it, it, it very quickly becomes a mess. So it is worth putting some thought into this because it will change how your players react and what they do. So, and it, which brings, I guess, to the other side of this, which, like, you can do this on purpose to mess with your players if that's how you want them to feel. If you want them to be confused about what's going on and how they should feel and what's, what's happening, that can be a powerful tool. But it's a, a tool that should be wielded deliberately and responsibly because it can very quickly get off track. I'm going to teach you three words that Matt Click taught me that changed the way that I GM forever. Um, I love you. Matt Click taught me how to love. No, <laughs> you would know. And that is his ramp to slide all the information he needs right into your character's brain. And so I caught on to this because Matt Click over at A Fistful of Dice and one of my favorite game masters does a really good job thoughtfully coming up with characters, storylines and motives. And the way that he communicates those awesome things is that he tells you the important ones so that you can get jazzed about it as a player. And so there are a lot of moments in Matt Click games that he's running where you go, oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Because there is no wall between a lot of what the player should know. If you want to hear about our secrets that, you know, and keeping secrets and all that, we have a whole other video about it. You can check that out. But what I mean to say is, if you walk into a throne room and Matt wants you to understand that there's this really cool mural on the wall that depicts a war, he will say, you would know, he would describe the mural, and then he would say, you would know that this is a mural depicting the Great War of Aranoth. And then if you wanted to, you could then try to roll to get more. Or he might then have something secret about it that you could discover. But he says that. You would know that blank. You would know that. And that's a good way to just put it out there to everybody. Or, Jeff, you would know that and put it to one character. I realize that that is the way to make sure that the cool details that you prep, that you want to like have those cool moments with players, don't get missed. Because if they don't ask what the painting on the wall is, you never get to describe how cool it is and why it plays into the story. But if you just say... You would know that this is the famous hero from this battle and that their sword on their hip is the legendary weapon Bloodsinger. Awesome. It's that's cool. Now, if you'd like to know more, you can roll. And then you can have a cool secret about how Bloodsinger was said to have been stolen and blah blah blah. But that way the players get all the cool juicy stuff, so use those three words. You would know and I love you. And I think the important thing that that does is it answers a question that the player didn't ask and in doing so implicitly tells them the question they should have asked, right? It skips over the entire question asking process. Um, and by diving right into it that and, and giving them exactly what they need, like you said, now you're implying, hey, this is important. Uh, you can use this in other ways as well, where if you want to guide a scene, you can make a player do just about whatever you want them to do 
in a sense, right? So if you if there's a room, okay, so this is the this is the uh, perp's room. It's been thrashed, but maybe you can find something. So okay, roll a skill check for me. Okay, you got a sixteen. All right, you're looking around. You're you're looking on. You know, you're you're shuffling through one of the drawers, and you find a box. Well, you would probably keep looking in real life, but when you find the box, you've now implicitly declared, okay, the box is the most important thing right now. The person could go, okay, I look for other stuff too, but they're probably not going to. They're going to go, okay, tell me about this box, you know? And then, the, okay, I open the box. Okay, inside the box, you see a key, you know, like you, the player is basically saying, here, you get to tell me kind of what's happening. I'm just along for the ride. They're buckling in, right? And I think it's important to remember that that's what you get with player information, that by telling somebody exactly what they need to know, you're sort of using a trick that already exists in everyone's mind where they know that automatically means it's the most important thing right now. So it's just a very uh, um, helpful trick as a GM. Yeah, and I think that there's a, a flip side to that which can can become very important too, which is like what you tell the players is what they'll think to examine, uh, which can be very good if you you know do what James said, you know, and say like, okay, like the first thing I'm going to tell them is that there's this dresser, and in the dresser is a box, and in the box is the key, because that's what I need them to find, you know, for this to work, and so that's what I'll bring. Uh, but I think it's easy to get into the into the trap of over describing rooms and spaces and what's in there, and it can very quickly like overload that player's sensation of like where we should go and what's important. Because um, I, I it's, it's something I've seen so many times where the GM will like very carefully build up a very like realistic depiction of a room with okay, there's. There's on the left side, there's a, a desk with three drawers on the left side and one drawer on the right side. And on, over on your right, there's a, a set of dresser drawers with all these different things. And over, and over there, there's a table scattered with all these different things. And we'll be like, oh, what's on the table? And it's like, oh, shoot. Like, I wanted them to go look at the dresser. And now they're like breaking apart candles on the desk to like see if there's anything inside them because I told them there's candles. And why would you say there's candles if the candles don't matter? Because like, so. Just as it's just as it's it's important to be clear about what you give them, it can also sometimes be just as important to be clear about what you're not going to bother setting up. Not because it's not there. Like if a player says, "Like, oh, is 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 there anything else in the room besides the the dresser and the desk?" Oh, well, yeah, there would be you know paintings on the walls and you know a carpet on the floor and you know just it's it's a room and there's room stuff in there, but like. You don't need to worry about that. It's basically a tacit way to say, like, that's not crucial to what's happening right now. And I don't want you going down a rabbit hole of what's over there because it doesn't matter. Uh, so it, it's okay, too, to, to limit the descriptions and to be more careful, not just to be clear in what you give them, but also to be clear in where you're going to direct their attention uh, and to sort of say, like, these are the things that are important. and there's other stuff here, but if you start digging through all that stuff, we're just adding 20 minutes of searching for nothing here because there's nothing in there that matters. <laughs> like, so, it, yeah, it's just, it, it solves problems in both ways. Exactly. It, the players only have everything you give them, but the players will keep everything you give them. <laughs> so only give them what's important. It's also totally okay to say, um, nothing else of importance that you would note. It's okay exactly. to do that and don't lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or yeah, you, you might be able to find some other stuff in here if you keep digging is also totally okay. Cause again, just being clear, it's a collaborative game. Uh, so I'll close with this and I'll say, uh, this is something super important to remember. I used to think that the fun part of playing the game was the player finding the box and opening it and finding the key. What I came to realize is that in my opinion, the fun part of the game isn't that. The fun part of the game is that once they find the box and once they see the key, what do they do with it? That's the fun part. And so if any of this rubbed you the wrong way, if you're thinking, well, but trust me, when it's clear, now the players have a platform to jump from and it's way cooler in my personal experience. We're Tabletop Terrors. We're all about fun, creativity, and tabletop games. 
If you like that kind of thing, subscribe and be a part of the, uh, the channel. And like this video. We love to hear comments. So I'd love to hear what's that one thing that you did. You didn't explain it quite right. And it turned into just a, a nightmare. What's that thing? Mine was a horse. We've, we've all got those stories. So I'd love to hear the story of, of what yours is. And as is customary, we end things with a Tabterian toast. May you mend the first break. May you kill the first snake. May you conquer everything you undertake. It's not job. In uh, the game um, that I ran for you, Tim, and, and a few other people uh, a while ago in Dragon Grin, before Dragon Grin was <laughs> what it is now, published. The Iron in, Heart of Innis. The Iron Heart of Innis. I couldn't remember the name. Um, I, just, I, I was escaping me, rather. I remember it, but it was escaping me at the time. And uh, But I described, I wanted to, to set something up, like how the gold was like filigreed into the walls here so that it would, you know, could be described later. And I described it in this hallway and the players just spent forever in this hallway, like trying to figure out why I described, basically, I remember. really to say it, trying to figure out why I described it in such detail. I just thought it was cool, but I did the thing where I accidentally basically said, guys, Look at these walls until your eyes bleed and you'll see God. I don't know. Like, <laughs> they refused to move on until finally I was like, guys, there's just nothing here. He did. But he it was totally my bad. And we were, yeah. we're like, oh, why did he mention it in this hallway? Look at this gold. And yes, yeah, finally he said, yeah. And, and I'll say this it wasn't even because we were all younger players and we yeah, younger yeah. game like, master. I, and you were like, you didn't even come right out and say, guys, there's nothing here right away. You kind of tried to no, do it three right, or four yeah. times, and we were like, no. Oh. And then oh, finally, exactly. finally, you're like, yep, so there's really nothing here, and you can move on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because it was just like, I don't know how else to tell them this, but it occurred, I, I knew immediately what I had done. Yep. But it was too late. <laughs> the yep. damage had been done. I still think. There's something there. I'm going There's back. something there. I'm going back. There's a little piece of my prep that's like, if only they had rolled a 37 with the help action, they could have known. <laughs> we wouldn't have to play those other four sessions. Oh.